Hello there, uh, very good evening, um, Attorney General, good evening and welcome to this special discussion um, just to update on some current happenings. More than a year ago on this very program, I have had an interview with you uh, discussing some of what the People's Progressive Party Civic Administration unearthed when it entered office um, on August 2nd. Among them were a number of questionable transactions um, from various ministries, including the Ministry of Finance. You had said that the files pertaining to those matters were sent to the police for them to do a criminal investigations. We saw today Soku interviewing the former finance minister Winston Jordan. Um, just give us a general view of the an, an update rather on, on those matters are. Thank you, Eddie, for inviting me to your program. As you correctly asserted. Approximately one year ago, you and I had a series of discussions in relation to transactions, many involving allocation, sale, lease, transfer, and assignment of vast plots of land by the previous government in favor of a number of persons and or companies. I highlighted then that the processes which were under scrutiny and the transactions that were under scrutiny revealed that they were not subject to any type of transparent or public process in terms of uh, ad advertising in the national newspapers or publishing in any form or fashion the lots or plots of land that were available and offering members of the public and any person who may be interested an opportunity to purchase or to compete in any competitive process. So you had public lands state properties, properties belonging to the people of Guyana being hived off in transactions that were completely non-transparent, completely unaccountable and given to certain persons. So you had the process that were deeply flawed and then when you examined the transactions themselves, you discovered that one, the lands, the authorities that were uh, executing these transactions in some cases did not have the authority to do so. In law, for example, you had uh, Trevor Ben at the Lands and Surveys Department selling and alienating state property when he was not authorized to do so as is required by law by the president of the time. His Excellency, Mr. David Granger. Then you had another set of transactions where, and even those, where you had no authority when you examined the transactions closely, the principle of market value was not at all employed in the sale of these assets. In fact, one is at loss to appreciate to understand or to determine how these purchase prices were arrived at. Many steps have been taken in these transactions. Civil proceedings have been filed. Uh, steps have been taken where possible to set aside these transactions. Notice, notices were sent to terminate some of these transactions where the law permit that to be done. And in some cases, files have been passed to the police with instructions to investigate and institute criminal charges where evidence exists to premise those charges. And Eddie, that is the responsibility of any government. 
The government is in charge of the state's assets. The government has a duty of care to protect and preserve those assets on behalf of the people because the assets belong to the people of Guyana and where there appears to be evidence that there has been malfeasance or misfeasance, negligence, recklessness, misuse and fraud in relation to state's assets, a government has a responsibility to act either through the civil law process or through the criminal law process. And our government has been executing that responsibility and discharging that mandate. Having said those introductory remarks, I now want to zero in to the transaction to which you are referring. The transaction is the sale of the largest wharf owned by the government of Guyana and by extension the people of Guyana. It is the, in, in the city of Georgetown or as they say in maritime terms Port Georgetown. It is an exceptionally expensive piece of real estate. This property First of all, let me make it clear that the transaction itself is the subject of civil proceedings filed by the Attorney General and they are pending in the High Court. Nissil is sued as a party. Winston Jordan is sued as a party. BK Marine Inc. is sued as a party. The Registrar of Deeds is sued as a party, and I can't recall who the other parties are. But this transaction is not new to the public domain. The statement of claim that has been filed in the High Court in these proceedings is quite detailed. It sets out a series of material facts several pages long. That statement of claim has been made public and was widely covered in the local press, both in the print media as well as in the electronic media. Quite apart from that, I sat with you on this very program or a similar program of this type nearly a year ago, as we stated, and I detailed the facts of this transaction based upon the documents that are in existence and are relevant to the transaction. Having said that and laid the foundation, I will now comment on the transaction itself. The property in question, first of all, is valued at about, I would say, 40 million US, I think that's the, the figure that the documents uh, suggest, which approximates to about 8 billion Guyana dollars. BK Marine was leased this property sometime in 2006 in an agreement that had several terms and conditions. He was to pay a specified sum as rent and more importantly, the company BK Marine was obligated under the contract to carry out a series of investments to the value of many million US dollars. And the investments and projects were itemized in the lease. He was supposed to create a wharf facility of a modern nature. He was supposed to create a hotel. He was supposed to create a shopping plaza. He was supposed to create recreational facilities, restaurants, bars, and um, exotic shops for tourists. He was supposed to develop that place into a showpiece 
for Port Georgetown. In consideration thereof, and after he would have expended X million dollars to establish those facilities, he would have been entitled, or the company would have been entitled under the contract to an uh, option to purchase. The company never even paid the rent. And certainly it did none of the proposed, contemplated, agreed upon developments. Not one, not a cake shop did it build on that facility. As I said, it did not even pay the rent. In 2014, when I was Attorney General, Nissil had commenced legal proceedings for recovery of outstanding rents against the company. In 2015, there was a change in government, as you know. Rather than prosecute that claim for rent in arrears and consider the possibility of terminating that contract, which would have been, in my respectful view and in the view of any dispassionate professional, in the public's best interest, the then government decided to negotiate with Mr. BK Marines through the instrumentality of NISIL. Mr. Jordan was the subject minister, and that is how he got involved. The negotiations ended up with this gentleman, or BK Marines, rather than being penalized for breaching the contract, for not paying any rent, for doing none of the things that he was supposed to do, rather than being penalized for those breaches, he was rewarded with a sale of the property. And he purchased the property. And what is even most nefarious is the purchase price. Firstly, a property that was valued, as I said, some 40 million US or, or 8 billion Guyana dollars, was sold for 110 million Guyana dollars. Then what they did, they added the arrears of rent that he owed, and that took the purchase price to 200 million Guyana dollars. So this is a 40 million US dollar property that was being sold for 500 thousand US dollars. Was that even paid though, even that amount? I'm getting to that. I want to pause here to highlight that no competitive process was embarked upon. So no one, no other investor, no other Guyanese got an opportunity to compete in that process. Right? No one else. This was gifted. No valuation Certificates seem to have been obtained to determine the value of the purchase price, but $110 million was arrived at on a $8 billion property. Now to your question, was the purchase price paid? What was paid was $20 million of that purchase price of $200 million. 80 million of which, or 90 million of which, is rents that were owing. So out of 110, that's the real purchase price. 20 million Guyana dollar was paid. The agreement says even that paltry sum must be paid off before title is vested. Minister Jordan vests the title without a single additional cent being paid and endorses on the title that no monies are owed, no liabilities exist, 
that the property is being sold free from all debts and encumbrance, thereby preventing and precluding the state from even recovering that meager sum that was due owing under that contract. I have described this transaction as the most vulgar and contumacious fraud that I personally, in my limited experience, have seen thus far in my short life. It doesn't end there. The BK Marine then goes and obtains a transport that has a value on it of $400 million. How they arrived at that figure now is another mystery. What does a government do in the face of a factual matrix that is as bizarre as that which I have outlined to you in relation to property that it owes a responsibility to the people for. There is evidence which is in the civil file. And what I'm speaking here, I have nothing to do with the criminal matter. I am speaking about the civil matter, in which I am the lawyer. There is evidence that a property that is seven miles up the river, meaning seven miles going south, along the Marara River. That is a fraction of the size of the state's property on the review here. And that property was sold by the private owner for 17 million US to um, Shore Base. 17 million US. The state's property is five times or more the size, located at the mouth of the river, far more um, strategic and, and, and better location. And that was gifted away for a paltry sum. And I understand that people are, are, are criticizing the government and the police force for taking these actions. The law compels, the constitution compels these actions to be taken in the protection and preservation of public property in the interest of the people of this country. A government that does anything less than what is taking place here would be abdicating its responsibility under the Constitution and to the citizenry of this country. I, I want to take you back a little bit. I think I heard you right, but just for clarification purposes and for the public's, um, you know, clarification for the public. Based on what the former minister did when he when he vested the, the interest, if you want, into the company by saying there was no encumbrances, there was no monies owed. In essence, even if in the absence of a valuation, where they estimated, if I want, the price as a, at one hundred and ten million dollars. In essence, uh, BK Marine paid twenty million dollars for his property. That's correct. And the minister in the vesting order has basically shut the door against recovering any additional sum by putting on the title itself that there is no sum owing, there is no liability existing. From 8 billion to 20 million? From 8 billion Guyana dollars to 20 million dollars. And I understand people are critical. Where, where are we going as a society? The, what we're seeing in, in terms of the criticism too is that there is, there is comparisons with um, previous instances where you know these kind of matters were raised and I think um, one investor there's a comparison being made with one investor on the East Coast about 110 acres um, under the guise that it was um, undervalued at the time which um, which um, investor? I think this this has to do with National Hardware a property that was bought on the East Coast okay that prop that issue has been ventilated in the public domain over and over again if you go and you check the record, you will see that that transaction was advertised in the newspapers. There was a public advertisement. That man, National Hardware, that company, was the only company that submitted 
as an expression of interest and proposed a price. That is the distinguishing feature. When that I, <laughs> you know, a lot of people now that the, man, the company invested and the land is cleared and the land is built up, a lot of people now are making all kinds of wild and reckless statements. They should have gone there at the time and see that land and the state that it was in and how many squatters from Sophia were on that land. That is why no one else or no other company expressed an interest at the time. Eddie, there is no comparison whatsoever not only with that transaction, but with any other transaction and this transaction here. And that is why I've said it is the most contumacious and flagrant manifestation of a fraud, negligence and recklessness that I've ever seen. That's my personal view. But, but this here, um, AG, is just one the, the transaction in question here that, that you know, Mr. Jordan has been um, interviewed by Soko for. It's just one in many because we have spoken about the, the, the long list previously. Well, I don't know how many other transactions they are, in, uh, they are investigating now. I know from what has been published in the press, there are some allegations of wrongdoing with uh, the purchase of motor vehicles from Guyana Revenue Authority at a price that is not market value again and by not going through the relevant process by persons who are said to be relatives of Mr. Jordan. Um, he was again the subject minister with responsibility for that agency. Those investigations, I understand, are, are continuing. I don't know, I can't refer to any other one of, of the cough no, right no, now. I'm, I'm speaking in terms of generally what the government would have found when assuming office, oh, not necessarily no, criminal no. investigations. They are, they, these investigations, as I said, both civil and criminal, are ongoing. You know that we have called in businessmen and have settled transactions with them. Sivan's waste disposal, we settled a case with them in relation to a property that Trevor Ben sold to them that he did not have the authority to sell. Not only that he did not have the authority to sell as the Commissioner of Lands and Surveys Commission, but the land did not fall under Lands and Surveys Commission. It, falls under, it fell under the National Sports Commission. They have a transport for it. So multi-agency collaborated and we settle that matter. We have another matter with the same Sivan's company where he got land somewhere at Providence or at Peters Hall. That matter is also being settled. We had, uh, we, there is another transaction that is being settled involving car care enterprise somewhere at Runvelt. Again, where they don't have the authority to sell and they can't pass title although they entered into agreement of sale and covenanted to pass title to car care enterprises. Um, we had a series of uh, contracts um, with, with, with um, this other guy, Courtney Ben, that we have entered into settlement in relation to. I tried to remember other land transactions. Look at the Ogle. number, Ogle. I, I don't know the number, but it has to be over 25 transactions that were settled at Ogle, where the persons came and they simply gave up their title or their lease and they got back their money or they are in the process of being refunded their money because they realized that they also were duped in these transactions. These lands, for example, at Ogle, they're landlocked. There's no access to them, so you own plot A, but when you go on the ground and you realize where plot A is, plot A is surrounded by plot B, C, D, E, and F, and there is no access to plot A other than to build a road through the other lands. I don't understand what method of madness was employed. No drainage, no road, no um, area carved out for streets, 
nothing. I, I don't know how they plan to access these lands. And, and they received a lot of money promising people to invest and to partner with them in a whole series of investments, including international hotels and, 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 and um, residential towers and condominium complexes. And the people don't have a right of way to the land. How are you going to drive to the land? You have to jump over five, six different plots of land. So the people are intelligent people. They are prudent business people. I don't know why they entered into the transaction in the first place. But they, 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 they came forward and they, are, they accepted that these things can't even, you know. Because as I said, they didn't get them cheaply either. Some of these tra transactions were of high value. But then again, no processes were involved. We don't know competitive processes. You don't know how this company from New York got this land. Was it advertised? Did companies in Guyana get an opportunity to buy these lands? How did you arrive at the value per acre? Because when you look at a land is situated here and right next door, if you check the price and the size are the same, but the prices are vastly different. You don't know on what basis. So, and then you have a whole, we have not even reached the stage of the ocean property, the ocean front property, and the river banks. You, you know how many, we spoke in opposition, the leader of the opposition in particular, at his press conference I remember used to highlight the vast areas along the river banks and the ocean banks that were gifted away through no processes, but these were lands that were deemed to be valuable because of oil and gas, etc. So th those transactions are all under review. And the, the process is a, is, a, is a slow one, I admit, because we have a government to run. We have to deliver goods and services to the people of this country. We have to advance the welfare of the people of this country. We have to advance the developmental agenda of this country. We have all the investment investors to deal with. So these things, you know, may not be getting the, the attention that they deserve and they may not be uh, prosecuted um, with the alacrity that they deserve, but, you know, we are getting there. We are getting there. Thanks, Minister. And that, that was the, the question I was, posed, I was going to ask you because I realized there was a pattern of all these transactions. There is an absence of any open, transparent, and public process. And I was going to reference the, the lands in the, the, the Demra River and so forth. But you, you dealt with it. Demra River, Pomeroon River, Essequibo River, Borbis River, all the rivers. <laughs> and the ocean front, number 19. Um, quarantine, best village on the west coast of, of Demerara. I, I can call him. I, I, I am aware of the, of, of the transgressions and the transactions that are, are, are notorious. Closing, closing comments, the Minister, because I'm, I'm recognizing a lot of people are trying to make the, the issue involving Mr. Jordan, which is a criminal matter outside of, of what you're dealing with, as political. Your closing comments. This is not a political matter. This is a grave matter of state. This is the public's interest that is being protected, preserved, and prosecuted. Um, the, the, the system, the prosecutorial and investigative arm of the state is at work. It is free from political interference. I spoke based upon my knowledge, not of the police investigations, but my knowledge of the civil matter which is pending in the High Court and which I am the, uh, the, 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 the lawyers or one of the lawyers in one of the parties involved in the case. And that is where I got my, my knowledge from. And in any event, as I said to you, we discussed this matter on more than one occasion nearly a year ago. So I don't, it, it should not be, these are not new narratives and new facts which we are imparting on this program. These facts have been known for a while and have been uh, disseminated in the public domain by me and uh, you and, and, and other, um, other platforms in the press. So there is nothing new here and um, it should not be viewed through a political lens. Mr. Jordan is not the only person 
who um, will be interrogated based upon the facts. There are a number of other persons who uh, I'm sure um, will have to be implicated. It can be a one-man transaction. So um, other persons um, will, 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 will also, I suppose, be investigated in due course. But that is a responsibility of the state. The state will have to act when the state's assets um, are being um, under, under, under attack. Thank you very much, Attorney General and Minister of Legal Affairs, Honorable Anna Landlal, and to our viewers and listeners. I want to say thanks for watching.